So this is the second link. I would have you all get it. This one here is serverless data processing. This is the other workshop we're going to do. Uh, and this one walks you through. If you're choosing the same back end, it'll, it'll spin it up for you. But this one allows you to connect Kinesis and watch how data flows in, how data streams through Kinesis, and, uh, and how we can use it to do real-time analytics. I'm emphasizing real-time because the stock exchange folks back here don't think it's real-time. So. But um, anyways, it's pretty close to real-time. <laughs> So yeah, so this will walk you through how to do that, how to watch your watch your uniform move around, things like that. So uh, this is the other one. So make sure you have both of these. Um, glad to glad to help with that. We're we're done. So if you guys, you know, we're, I was just giving this last one, and then we're gonna do one other session. When you guys done. Uh, Scott, I have a question too. Uh, October fifth, ten minutes. You will try and Oh, okay, so we just go on. Okay, we can do that. All right. So, okay. I can do that. Yeah, that's actually yeah, that's what I'm going to do right now. So, so, yeah, yeah, you got the right time. So. I'm going to show them a new feature that we literally just released about three days ago that are four people just getting started. So it's not in any of my demos, and really nobody's seen this yet. So you guys can see. Yeah, this That's right. You're lucky. So, yeah, yeah. So yeah. So we're so I'll be sitting down. But all right. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I'll walk through this. Okay. Everybody got this, right? All right. So let's go. All right. So, what I'm going to show you here, and actually, let me get it up first and then we'll see it. All the decks that are open. Okay, so on this, on the dashboard, if you go in here, if you, if you remember, uh, we're going to the dashboard, we now have a new thing. We, we've been looking right now, we've been looking at functions on how to create a function, different things like that. And, and remember what I was saying, that's not necessarily the most scalable approach, right? We're not able to, to do uh, everything we want to do. Now, I am in Oregon on this one, so if you go into Frankfurt and you don't see what I'm going to show you, just because we haven't released it there yet, but it is coming pretty soon. We stagger on our rollout. So, um, all right, so we're going to go into the applications here. And this is a good way to get started. So we're going to do a create application. And in here, it's going to ask you, what kind of application do you want to do? Do you want to do service API backend, file processing, scheduled job notifications, or queue processing? A lot of things that we just talked through, right? Now, a couple of things to call out, some caveats. Uh, they're all node right now. That's just right now. We have more languages coming. This is very much a preview or a beta that we do, and so not everybody's seen this, uh, but this is something that, that we think will help people get into serverless. Because um, everything I showed you to Sam, who, who's ready to jump right into the CLI now? It's, it's a little overwhelming at first. So, so this is another way of getting started. So I'm going to choose a serverless API backend. And the first thing it does is it tells me what services are going to be included with this. And we've already seen this, right, with API Gateway, AWS Lambda, and uh, DynamoDB. And so we're going to have three AWS Lambdas for services used. And then it does uh, the, the deployment workflow. You can choose, create, clone, and develop, OK? Let me, so let me just kind of walk through this real quick here. So I'm going to create it. All right, so we need to name our application. So this is my uh, new app. Okay. 
description, I don't need a description if I don't want to. Runtime, I'm gonna choose TEDx. Now I can choose, so just so you know, when you're using AWS, it ties in with GitHub really well. Uh, it also works with GitLab on some things. This particular one is just GitHub and code commit. Code commit is our Git repository. How many of y'all use Git now? Okay, alrighty. So this is for code versioning. If you're not doing code versioning, I highly encourage you to look at something like this. Uh, this is really critical. So, all right, so we're gonna call this my Lux repo. And I'm gonna create a, a roles and permissions boundary. So I wanted to do that. And I'll explain that. I'll explain the roles and permissions boundary to you in a moment. All right, so we're gonna create this. And it's going to spin for a minute. So what it's creating is not just an, a lambda like we were doing earlier. Instead, it's, and yeah, that's my big fat mug on there. It's always fun to see that. So I didn't do this just so you would see that, but that's funny. Um, yeah, when they asked me the first, when they asked me if they could use the video, I said, yeah, that's fine. The very first video, it caught me like, Talking, thanks for that, I appreciate that. And come and talking really funny, now that I've got twice, so. <laughs> right. Um, so, what it's creating is it's gonna create the three lambdas. It's gonna create a, 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 a repository, a code repository, I used to code commit. If I had chosen GitHub, it would, it would ask you for permissions to connect to your GitHub account. And it would have created the repo there too. So it works just fine. Then it's going to set up a deployment, a CI CD pipeline for you. Okay? So it, it automatically creates the pipeline and then it's going to set up monitoring for you automatically. Okay? So what you've got out of the box is a full on application that you can start messing around with. All right? So let's, let me take a look at it and kind of show you uh, what it's going to be like. Okay? So here's the overview. This, you can actually go through and watch the video of, of, of stuff that I say, although you've seen it all today. Um, it lists, it's still building out the infrastructure down here. Uh, now, one thing I want to explain is this thing called the permissions boundary. <coughs> Excuse me. So, this, when you deal with Amazon, when you deal with AWS, you have the ability to have you know, different people who are logging in have different roles of permissions on the accounts, okay? And you can do organizations and things like that. When we're dealing with CICD, this, this is particularly aimed at working with teams that are building, not the one-off deployment or developer, which most of you work on teams from what I'm getting, right? How many of y'all work on a team, development team? Okay, anybody all by themselves? Okay, uh, both, all right, so it's gotta make it difficult, don't you? So now I'm just giving you a hard time, but yeah, it's so so both times. So the way this works is um, we 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 introduce this new thing called a a boundary permissions boundary, and I want to kind of explain it. It can be a little confusing. Let me get the pen. So you remember when we talked about policies when you have the lambda? Okay, I don't know if that might be backwards. Okay, you have the, the policy for the, the, the policy, uh, permissions policy, and you have the execution policy, right? Or, or role, execution role. Okay, if I do role here. Okay, there we go. So, this is who can execute the lambda. You'll see that? That's a great tip. And then the second one is what can the lambda do? Okay, however, you as a developer have access to change all that. That's all stored in the same template, right? So what happens when we have seven developers that are working on this, but only these two developers should get to change the permissions, okay? Well, everybody has access to the permissions because it's in the Git repo. We don't want to block a developer from working on this. So we introduce this idea of a thing called a permissions boundary, okay? And the permissions boundary says, what can these roles and what can these labels reach, okay? Well, they can, they can hit DynamoDB, they can hit uh, you know, SNS, they can hit SQS, but let's say for some reason they want to do event branch, 
Okay? Well, the event verge is not in the permissions boundary. So they can put the permissions in here to get to, to event bridge, but it's not going to work until one of these guys who has access can go in and add that to the permissions boundary. Does that make sense? So this gives, gives operations control over this. And that's something that, that a lot of operations teams have told us. That, look, we, we like serverless, but in an in a enterprise world, we need to be able to control you know, where, where that's coming and who can get access to it. So that's why we have the permissions bound in. That's handled, handled by IAM. So I am being the identity and access manual. So that's kind of the idea of what the information boundary is. All right, so let's take a look and see what we've got here. So a couple things are happening. Now we've got an endpoint. Let's hit it and see what it does. I don't know, to be honest, I haven't looked at this, so. Okay, well, it's, it's pretty empty right now. It's not doing a lot, but it's an endpoint. Okay, so let's take a look at, at the code. Now, so here's the fun thing. In the code here, you can see I've got, I've got the repo, and I've got instructions on how to connect to it from Cloud9, Visual Studio, Visual Code, JetBrains, and, and how I can use it from within CNCLI. Um, so, I have uh, the deployments pipeline, okay? which uh, already one has one deployment has happened. That's the initial deployment. And finally, some monitoring, uh, which you know very little has happened uh, because I've only hit it one time, and that's this guy right there. All right, uh, so there you go. So let's let's see what we can do with this. So if we go into the code and we go to the repo. And I'm going to grab the, the repo and I'm going to clone it. I'm going to go back to my Cloud9 instance if I can find it. See what you guys can't see is the, oh yeah, you can't see that big window coming down over mine. So uh, here it is. All right. Okay, so let's close these out. And let's go. Save that. If we 
we'll go back here. Let's see what we get. There we go. So now that, didn't, I, that actually was just changing the data. Okay, so now what I've done is I had an endpoint that it hit. I've changed the data behind it. But if I want to actually change some code, let's take a look and see what we can do. So I go back to my, my uh, EMEA here. Let's see what we can change. And let's see, there's get all items. So in here, I'm going to do two things. So here's items. So I'm going to change this to items. We're actually going to make this an object. And then we'll also say message. This is cool. All right. So now I'm going to save this. All righty. I'm going to go to my endpoint, refresh it. And I don't see anything, right? All right. Because I need to push my code. So let's go back here. I'm going to say get, oh, yeah. get status. If you've not used get, uh, that's okay. It's just how it works. So, uh, so what that shows me is you've got one modified file. Uh, and so I want to stage that file. Actually, I'll just get, uh, do it all in one call. So get uh, commit understand. Output. All right. So now I'm going to push that. And there we go. Boom. I pushed that. So now what we should be seeing, if we go back to the Lambda dashboard, we go to our repo, we go to our deployments. Okay. What we're going to see, and actually we'll just pop over the deployments themselves. All right. Just, this just succeeded. So what that did is it was triggered by the code repo. Now what it's doing is it's building out my code. Very simple, not a lot to do in Node. Just packaging it all up. When it's done, then it's going to pass it off to CloudFormation. And CloudFormation is going to do two different things, okay? When CloudFormation runs, we don't just push it out, okay? We do what we call it is a, is a change set. So we say, okay, here are the changes. Now, all I updated was the code, right? I didn't update anything in the infrastructure. So CloudFormation is not going to find any changes there. It is going to change the code. But I'll show you. I'll add another Lambda in just a second here. Um, so, so once that's done, oh, hey, we had we an error. Oh, we had an error. Well, this is embarrassing. Okay, so we can look at the details. All right, let's see what happened. There it is. Oh, look at that. Test coverage. Who, who writes tests? I'm proud of you all. I don't. Okay, not again. So, so my test coverage, so this is a good, this is a great thing to see, actually. So in, in the build spec, in, in the commands to run this, let me show you. Oh, this is cool. This is cool. Okay. So in here, in the build spec file, I'm actually running my tests. Okay. So if it fails, then obviously it takes it down. So it stops the deployment. So you can, some people, how do you test in Lambda? That's how, right there. If you're running tests, you could do the same thing. So it would do this. Now, I could go in and fix the tests, but um, I'm going to just, don't judge me. I'm just going to comment <laughs> on the tests. <laughs> what do you think of that? All right, so we're going to do that. So we're going to do git commit and turned off. Uh, sprinklers, because we don't want my boss to know I turned off the test. That's not true. I'll say turn off the test. Okay. Git push. Okay. So now this this thing up here absolutely killed me. I don't know how to minimize it. Here, 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 here. There we go. 
All right. Uh, okay, so let's go back to our code now that we've got that going. Uh, let's see, this is this is actually the test. Let's go back to the, the build problem. <coughs> And let's see if it passes this time. There, let's, I think the easiest way is to make the. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right, so just now, just went by that. Now we're going to try this again. Not running tests. I don't suggest it, some production, but you know. All right, so let me go back to explaining the change set. Okay, so what this does is it will then create a change set. It will say these are the things that have been changed and are they valid? It will run a validation on it to make sure they're okay. It's not going to catch everything. I mean, there's something, I mean, it, it, we do our best to catch everything, but it may not catch everything. It certainly doesn't inspect your code. So that's, that's one thing to look at. We're not inspecting code, we're inspecting infrastructure. Okay, but this doesn't have any changes uh, in, the, in the infrastructure, so uh, it, it'll go on through. The next thing it does is once the change set's done and it's validated against the, the current change set, then it'll execute the change set. So then it'll go out and it'll make the changes to the file permission. Look at that, my, my test passed. What's up? Okay, so let's do that. Now I'm gonna do one other thing here. So you can, so you can kind of get an idea. All right, while this is going, let's go back to our code. Okay, and I'm actually going to do a second one. Uh, let's see, get all items. We'll just copy this. Okay, get. We'll say get hello. All right, so there's a new code, and all I want this to do is I don't need any of this. Okay. And I don't need anything above this. I'm not going to use anything. All it's going to do is say hello world, okay? Because because I'm a clever developer, right? Okay, so I'm going to say get rid of this, and we're going to get rid of this, and we're going to say hello world. All right, so that's the new code for this. Now we need to tell. We need to tell our application that that's going to exist. First of all, let's see if we're on the build finished here. Still deploying, and now it's succeeded. Let's try this. And there you go. Okay, so I just made a change in my application. I ran tests. I failed the test. I deleted the test. I ran the change again, and now everything works fine. That's really the solution to most things get rid of the tests, right? So, not really, but that'll, that'll work for the moment. But let's change the infrastructure so you can see that happen. Okay, so I'm gonna go, I'm gonna kill some of these because I'm, I'm bouncing around too many and getting confused. Okay, I'm gonna do this one. All right, so if I go back to this, I've created a new uh, Lambda called Get Hello, and it's, uh, I've, I've, and it's a real simple code. Now in the template, uh, I'm going to create, I'm going to take one of these guys, the get all items function, let's say. Okay. Now these have a lot of comments on them. You can clear them out if you want, but uh, that's the, these are really to help you, uh, as you. This is very much for starters. Okay, so I have this get all, so I'm going to say this is the get hello function. Okay. Now, it's a function, code URL is still in that root. The handler is the get hello. Okay, so that's all I gotta change. It's still get, uh, I should change that too, so. This is called, uh, we'll call get hello handler. Because I'm picky. Alrighty. So, we'll go back to our template. And get. Hello. Okay. All right. I'm good with the timeout, the memory, everything else is good. Uh, I don't need. Now, I know you're thinking, well, what does it matter? You know, it's just a test. But I'm going to kill these anyway because I don't need those policies. And we try not to leave policies laying around that we don't need. Security reasons, right? 
Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change my path on this. It's still a git, so I'm happy with that. And I'm going to save it. So theoretically, if I've done everything right, that should work. Okay? But I want to test and make sure before I send it out. Okay? Let's see if we can do this. So we're going to say Sam local info. And then I'm going to say uh, git hello function, and I shouldn't need, oh, minus, uh, and I'm going to do dash dash no event, because I don't need to pass an event into it. Let's see what happens. Now, what it's doing is it's fetching the Docker that's required to run this, okay? So it'll actually grab that, it's mounting it up, and there you go. So I, te I just tested that server, or that Lambda, without ever pushing it out, okay? So if you're asking how do I develop locally, I could do something also like start local, nope, SAM local start API. I don't have to pass anything else uh, and I can hit enter. Now you see I've got an endpoint that matches each of these endpoints that are declared, including the one that says uh, get hello. So I could go to, let me copy this real quick, so I could say new terminal, and I could say curl. I think I lost my H there, so yep. So if I say curl, and you come over here, and it should still be running on one of these. And there you go, there's your, there's your response. Okay, so again, so, then, so my API is up and running over here. Uh, I can hit this multiple times as if I were sitting at, uh, you know, developing. You asked about could I run production from this? Well, that's your response right there. And I'm not actually reaching out to the database or anything like that. So it's not, not incredibly fast, it's really for development. All right, so we've added a new API or, or Lambda. We know it works, we know it works with the API. So what's next? I go ahead and I get commit m added new lambda. Oh, that was horrible spelling. Lambda. Okay, so this time, push. This time in our when we're doing our change, it, it, there's actually a um, when it's doing the, the change set, it actually is going to be looking at. The, the change in architecture. So let me bring that up again so you can see it. Let's see if it, let's see if it passes. So I've, I've been kind of pounding it against the CI CD. So you think about the fact that you know, for those of you who aren't doing any kind of Git repository or any kind of code versioning, this is a very simple way to get started. Now this is service, obviously. But if you think about what's going on, Every time as a developer I make a change and I like it, I can commit it, right? All I'm doing is committing to the development repo. Okay, so here's the advantages of that. Uh, how many of you are not doing something like this in your development cycle? Everybody's doing this? Okay, well that's good. But how many of you are running like a Git repo type thing? Okay, all right. So the advantage of this is number one, you're you're you quickly find out if your tests are running. Because you Tell me this, so your developers, do you trust that everyone, I, I've, I've been where I have you know, 20 developers working for me. There's no way that I trusted every developer was running their tests locally. Did you run your tests locally? Oh, yeah. Worked on my machine. Well, I run those same tests in the CICD pipeline. Well, they all failed here. What happened? Oh, those tests. Yeah, the <laughs> tests. Yeah. So what I'm doing is my, my developer would get Slack notices or they would get emails or text messages or knocks on the door if, they're, if they didn't pass the test there, okay? Hey, you broke the code, okay? So that's the first thing. The second thing, even if it works, and I don't know if you've been in this situation, but I have. So many times, you know, the business will come to you and say, here's what we want, we've drawn you a picture, this is what we're looking for, blah, 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 and then, and then you go away for four months, you build it, and you come back, and they say, that isn't at all what we asked for. And, and I don't know if you've ever been in that situation. That's kind of extreme. But in this situation, they can see daily 
where the application is, and they can be able to say, hey, eyes on screen, this isn't working. So I really encourage you to look at something like this. It looks like my, my both my, my uh, source and my build have gone through, and now my deployment is happening. Uh, my change set passed, and now we're executing the change set, so hopefully pretty soon. So right now, if we were to go to forward slash hello, before the build's done, I get an internal server error, which is what I expected. Okay, and we'll let this finish. So yeah, we just released this functionality, so we're pretty proud of it. We'd love to try it out. We'd love to hear your feedback on it. So is it for for people? And most of you are brand new servers. For people who are brand new servers, is this helpful? Is this you know? Do you find this this a good way? Okay, so it's built out. Let's go back to our website, and it could be cached. So let's give it a second. <coughs> and I still get an internal server error. That's not what I want to see. All right. Okay, so we're going to figure out what's going on here. First of all, did I do the right one? Okay, so now you get to see me troubleshoot right in front of you. All right, so forward slash hello, that's right. And let's go here. So here's what I'm going to do. First of all, I'm going to go to the function itself. And I'm going to... Okay. There we go. All right, so let's test this. So here's what we're going to do. We're just going to test this locally, okay? And yes, that's fine. We don't care about the event. Test event. But you have to have one, so we'll send that in. Test this. All right, so it's saying get hello. So somehow I messed up a module somewhere in here. Let's see what we got. Usually that's a naming issue. Okay, let's go back here. All right, so we have get all items. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Source handlers get hello. Anybody see it? You guys see it? Get hello handler. So let's see if I got it. I'm not too proud to ask for help, so if you see it. That's the same. Oh, you know what? I wonder if I did not save this when I did it. Let's see. Yeah, yeah. I think I didn't save a file, folks, which I'm guilty of all the time, and that got renamed. All right, so let's try this. Okay. Save. Oh, yeah. Ah, who knows what it is? I see it. Yeah. What is it? You know, you do that you do quite a bit. Mm, every time it gets me. Yes, you're exactly right. Wait, so it wasn't do a couple of times. What's that? Why? Why does he ask us to do it manually every hey. time? I, I don't I don't either. I, I didn't stage the file, so it so it, yeah it blew up. So here let's do git and this is why Imperial is better. What's that? This is why Imperial is better. Uh, no. Which one? Imperial. Oh. Oh yeah. It's our deal. All right. So get it. All right. Hands up. So now we're gonna so git. There we go. Yeah, that's that's always uh, all right. 
какую-то идею по, по статусу, по комитету. Yeah, so notice, yeah, there's no file. Yeah, so we'll have to, all right, so now it's gonna build out again. So now, we're gonna wait a minute while this does its thing again. Sorry guys, I hate it when I do that. Oh, it's already to build, that's good. All right, so while we're doing this, and while I'm that, what questions can I answer? This is the last session of the day, we'll be wrapping up pretty quick, but while you got me, I'm glad to answer any questions related or unrelated. All right, this is this is a sign of I've done my job well, or you don't care. <laughs> One, it's probably half and half, uh, but I'm okay with that. So, all right, well, we gotta wait and see if this works. If it doesn't, I won't let you guys sit around. But generally, generally it takes me once or twice to get it right. This is why we have the development pipelines. And this is why we, we don't we don't push to production, right? So we'll see we'll see what happens. Can I have a question? Yeah. How did you pass the tests if you didn't have any files? How did I pass the execution test? Because the infrastructure was the same in the template. Why though? Because a file that exists and still does it. I don't know. I was actually thinking that when I was sitting there. I was like, what did this pass? The, the, because the template says, hey, I'm going to add this new lambda, it passed. But what we really should be doing, and I thought I'm taking this back, is I'm going to add this new lambda, but if the file's not there, I'm not going to add it. Sometimes people add lambdas and then we'll, we'll update the code inside or something like that. But that's why I passed the test. Because infrastructure wise, you say, yeah, those are, remember I said earlier, it doesn't catch everything, but it catches a lot of things. Like more what it checks on the change sets is, is your syntax right on the on the in the actual syntax? So I got my syntax right. There's just no file. So there's just no code. So good question. Because the reality of what's happening here is that the package code is actually sitting in a zip file somewhere. So it's it's kind of hard for it to check and see if it's in existence. What I'm more surprised about is what it deployed. That's what. The change set, one thing, the deployment is the, the, the actual deployment that you couldn't find the code. All right. So we're almost there. And we are deployed. OK. Big moment. <laughs> Victory! That's right. Man, if that didn't happen, that would have really just sucked. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm like, I don't know, guys, this doesn't work. <laughs> it does work, and it works well, but you have to check your code. It has to have code to run, bottom line, right? So, guys, that's all I've got since we're not running the workshop, but we've actually done a lot of talking today, and I appreciate you being patient with me uh, and listening to me. I'm sure my voice can drone on quite a bit, but um, you've got ways of contacting me. Uh, I am going back, to, uh, I'm here all week actually. I'm, I'm speaking at another conference over the next several days. So I'm on your time zone for the next week, so please hit me. I'm also, yeah, I, I think I saw earlier, I have a wife and five kids. So once I hit home, it's like, ah, you know? So this is a good week to ask me questions. Uh, and I'll try to you know, answer whatever I can. But I appreciate your time. And I would love to, if it's okay, I would love to take a picture with all of us. Would that be all right? Everybody come up, come up front. Yeah, I'll put something fun around the screen and stuff. There we go. Oh, where's my good phone? Uh. <laughs> All right. All right. Yeah, I'll, yeah let's get around. I'm going to add, did you take a picture um, of that angle of my phone? <laughs> There you go. Oh, thank you. All right, no, we're going to keep close together. Come on. We're all friends together. All right, ready? You got to do that. <laughs> Come on, everybody does it. Yeah, there we go. Nice. Oh, no, we're stay here. No, what are you doing? <laughs> All right, thank you so much, guys. I appreciate it. Thank you for your time. Oh, thank you so much. 
Excellent. I think you guys got an hour or so back today. <laughs> awesome. Just go on Twitter. Anybody got a problem with that? Okay, all right. I'm put it on Twitter. We just want to be Christian Trump. He couldn't come with me, but, uh, you know, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, last year I was here, everybody, are you, are you president? I'm like, I'm not Trump. Obviously, I'm not Trump when he knew that, but that's like, oh, Trump. Like, We're not best friends. I don't know him, but yes, he's best president. So, uh, yeah. Any, any other questions related to anything else? Okay, I, yeah, Bob, I'm pretty much helping the book. So. All right, well, with that, then we'll shut it off. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right, we'll turn this off. Oh, you know what? Don't leave. They've got certificates for you. Oh, so yeah, we have certificates. Boy, she would have shot me if I, if you left without them. So let me let me tell her. We're done. Hey there. We just wrapped up, but they're not leaving until I told them you've got certificates for them. So so, um, so I don't know if, if you guys are done now or. Okay, thank you. Oh. There you go. <laughs> All right. Yes. I'm trying to think if there's any else cool I can show. Where is this going to be? See the history here too. You can see there's that there's the one that I crashed. There's the changes I made. Um, so you have all kinds of, of history on this. Um, there's some settings you can make on it. You can there's a lot of control you can do with these pipelines. Uh, so I mean, if you look into the CICD, and this is not a serverless only thing, so you have a, a lot of control. Uh, that's it. Hey, I love you. You're the best. <laughs> Everything is great. All right, that was awesome. <laughs> hey, я люблю тебя. Ты лучший. Все замечательно. <laughs> We're done. Right. Yeah. And in Chinese, how it sounds? In Chinese. What's that? How it sounds in Chinese. Chinese? Yeah, I can do that in Chinese. Same thing. In Russian, the accent is great. Very, very close. Yeah. yeah. Hey, I love you. You're the best. Everything is very beautiful. Arabic? Yeah, they've done quite a bit of work here. Quite a bit of work here. Here's English, Australia. Hey, I love you. You're the best. Everything is wonderful. They need an English cowboy. Hey, I love you. You're the best. Everything is wonderful. There we go. All right. And we're all set. Isn't that cool? Yeah, that's the, um, I showed this earlier, we're talking about how to build applications. So we should have a good one. Yeah, yeah, this, yeah, yeah, this is a cool application there. Wait, it's just used for demoing, but it's fun because what's really good, like I did in Turkish over last week and, and this week I did it in Russian.
my older boys as a coach. Yeah. And I'm not necessarily sure, but I look up to both of them. So. It's a great, a great emotion. I think yeah. Your, your children. Oh, are yeah. Right. It's like, oh, you're, you're like, I would put you over my knee, but not really because you're bigger than me. So, okay. <laughs> Hey, I, I will say, you've all got my email. I'm pretty thick skinned, which I, I don't know if that translates to the Russian, but in American, that means you can make fun of me and probably won't bother me. Um, I would love any feedback you have on, on what you had today. Shoot me an email. If you want to say, hey, this is great, this is great, that's fine. But more importantly is, hey, it would be better if. Uh, that, that, I'm always open for that kind of feedback. Would love to make this better for y'all. Yeah, we had some technical difficulties, but I think we, we had a pretty good day and we rolled with it. But I would certainly like to hear if there's something I can do to make it better. So, because this is something we share all over the place. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Yeah, this way of delivering. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, loud. And <laughs> thank you very much. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. And Coach Park. 
Und Alexander. Ja, mein Freund Ninja. So. Ja. Ja. Ich ja. Everybody get one or? We're working on a couple more. Okay, very nice. Yeah, I got it. They've said they've answered all the questions. Or I mean, they don't have any questions. Any questions for her? <laughs> so, спасибо большое вам, что вы пришли. Извините, что возникли такие небольшие недоразумения, но мы постараемся исправиться в следующий раз. Надеюсь, вам удастся самостоятельно дома поработать. Но если будут какие-то вопросы, можете обращаться либо к нам, либо к прямому кейку, он как раз все оставит. Поэтому, надеюсь, у вас остались положительные впечатления. Поделитесь, пожалуйста, своим мнением в отзывах. Yeah, guys, I really enjoyed it. I really appreciate you having me in. This is fun for me. Uh, it may be more grueling for you, but I enjoy it. So, uh, спасибо. 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 Thank you. Thank you so much for coming, and I, I. Hope that uh, everyone enjoyed too. So. I do too. Dobre noche. I'm just, I'm, I'm just like exhausted my Russian right there. So, Daspadanya? Uh, Daspadanya, yes. yes. What's up? Yeah. yeah, I was from TV right there. Yeah, most of my Russian is from TV. From TV? Yeah. So, come on, you learned a lot of, of English on TV, did you not? Yeah. yeah. So. Alright. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. I'm so what? sorry. I have one more thing for you guys, if you want them. Uh, these are currency where I'm from in the tech world here. So if you want some, and they, they got a little messed up in the trip, but yeah, uh -huh. there are stickers here. So. so. Yeah, grab some, you just set on a table, grab some. Yeah. What? Uh, maybe you will show? Yeah, if you, uh, yeah, I'll show you guys what we've got. They look like a lot of these. So, <laughs> so yeah, I've got, uh, we've got the, so we the serverless is more, and this is a little wrinkle, but they, they flatten out, obviously. And then we've got, this is the brand new service that we have, the Denbridge. Okay. I don't know, do you guys put, no, oh, well, these aren't your laptops. Do you put stickers on your laptops? Okay, good. All right, we've got the squirrel for Sam. We've got the acorns. So whatever you want, feel free to dig through here. Just grab some. So yeah, these are these are cool. So it's a good reason to start. Yeah. I like them. If you don't, that's a when you go to conferences in America, that's like you have stickers. You have stickers, stickers. So that's a big deal. 